He's like really I'm gonna just kind of... Good. Okay, I have a question that might make your head explode. How much does the internet weigh? I'm not talking about your tablet or how heavy your iPhone is. I'm talking about the whole crazy internet, from cat memes to World of Warcraft to those videos you don't want mom to know about. I'm Yara, this is Zoetic, and we're investigating where the internet lives and just how much it weighs. You may have heard of the cloud. It's some invisible place where you can send all those crucial photos taking up space on your phone. Like that photo you accidentally took of your thumb or those baby pictures you wish mom hadn't saved. Whoa, where'd you get that picture of me? What does this enchanted land of old photos and archived emails look like? It looks like this. Exciting. It's called a server farm or a data center. The video you are watching right now, this video lives in a place like this. There are upwards of 3 million of these data centers in the US, ranging in size from a small server room attached to your average office building to the massive server farms of major internet players. All these data centers occupy over 1.5 billion square feet. That's more than 27,000 football fields. And companies continue to build them as fast as they can to keep up with advancing technology. But chances are you've never actually seen one of these industrial sized server farms. Google servers are located in places like Jackson County, Alabama and Mays County, Oklahoma. Not exactly the sexiest tourist destinations. While they're tucked away on the margins of society, these humming electronic mazes are vital to delivering the games and on-demand video that the internet's 3.2 billion users demand. Of course, this requires an immense amount of power. Server farms running 24 seven for so many people get hot. How hot? Hot. These servers need electricity to keep them running and electricity to constantly cool them off. The ugly truth is internet culture directly contributes to climate change. Think about it. The internet is now our library, our television, our movie theater, and our mail. It takes a huge amount of energy to store all that info. So how much does the internet's carbon footprint actually weigh? Google's cloud weighs somewhere around one and a half million metric tons. That's the amount of carbon dioxide its data centers and offices released in 2014. And that doesn't include emissions from things like street view cars for Google Maps or the construction of the data centers themselves. Which means each Google user, like, you know, you, me, and everyone we know, is responsible for about eight grams of carbon a day. Which may not sound like much, but remember, that's just for Google. That doesn't include Twitter, Facebook, and the 600 other tabs you have open right now. A study by Greenpeace says that about 20% of the energy Google is using for its data centers comes from one of the dirtiest sources of electricity, coal. As for Facebook, its data cloud weighs a little bit less than Google's. About half their energy is from nuclear, coal, and natural gas. And if you use Microsoft, ta-da! About 40% of your cloud is coming from either coal or nuclear power. So while the internet is a big, fat, carbon-emitting giant, tech companies are taking steps to limit the energy required to run and cool server farms. It's cool. Google has launched something called DeepMind, an artificial intelligence program that, among other things, will make its cooling system as efficient as possible. The company the company also purchases carbon offsets to combat their high levels of consumption. And there may be more good news. Some companies like Apple say they're committed to transitioning to wind and solar power to run their data centers, while other companies are literally sinking their servers to the bottom of the ocean, where temperatures are cold, eliminating the need for energy intensive air conditioning. But wait, wouldn't that just make oceans warmer? Seems like the internet continues to solve some problems while creating others. In fact, while it may appear like we're doing better for the environment by using less paper in our emails and bills, Greenpeace points out that the digital shift may actually be enabling higher levels of energy consumption. In other words, what we're currently creating is not so much a fluffy white internet cloud as a gray blanket of smog. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk a lot about, you know, composting and using less paper to save the environment, but we never really think about, or at least I've never thought about, how much each individual photo that I store in the cloud is contributing to climate change. But if you guys have any ideas about how we're inadvertently contributing to climate change in the digital age, let us know in the comments below and maybe subscribe. Promise it won't contribute that much to climate change.